All right, so here's what I have for you tonight. Um, I'm working on this video, a uh, reaction video that I hope to post by Sunday night. We have activities going on in our family this weekend. Um, and so I took a nap after work today, a nice old lady nap, and got ready to put in some hours tonight. And so the other day I noticed that uh, the NTCC and Graham, their Facebook page had a poster on it about defend your church and all this stuff about, you know, about this, about being the, it was a quote. Okay. You can, here it is. And I noticed at the bottom, it said, Pastor Anthony Shama. I guess it was giving credit to him. So I was like, who's this dude? You know, is he a pastor in the church? Um, Never heard his name before, so I I looked up the name. I just typed the name in Google, and all this stuff came up, and it was not anyone in this church. And so I also noticed some other churches on their Facebook page within the same time frame, the last two weeks, posted the same thing, only it looks like, I don't know if NTCC grabbed that colorful poster background somewhere or if they did it themselves but I thought okay do they know this guy pastor Anthony Shama is that why they're sharing his quote do they know the context or anything because uh, I watched a lot of his videos and I think I'm pretty sure I know the context and um, <laughs> you know you have to be have a degree of being responsible. It, it's not easy in the online world. I do not believe you can just go online and say whatever you want um, about people and then apologize after, as Keckle did back on FactNet in 2004. He just came out there and just plowed people, um, ripped them a new one from top to bottom, and Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. Oh, I had this wrong. And you just can't do that. The same way, if you're going to quote, like, just, it seems right. It seems like, ah, eh, you're making a big deal about this. Oh, they put this quote up there with the dude's name. So I'm looking up who is this dude, and I find out he's got his own little ministry gig thing going on. Um, it's right here. And he has a Facebook page. And on there, you scroll way, 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 way down, you find the quote in question. And he also has some interesting little habits. <laughs> he's, he's got his little um, side business. That he wants people to like and share. Kind of sounds like the Shakeology beach body thing that went on over in NTCC for years. Maybe it's still going on. Who knows? I uh, don't hear much about Shakeology very much lately. But um, so there's similarities there. Maybe they do know who he is. A funny thing is, so I'm, I'm looking up who this guy is. And you can see here, I mean, I don't take news reports all the time very seriously because you don't have context. So... I can see that he was, um, he had a bunch of, uh, he had a, a cache of guns that were seized, I think it was two years ago, and you see the picture here. I don't know, it seems like he crossed state lines and he brought back guns and he did not have permits for all that stuff. I don't know what he's planning, but I've watched some of his videos. <laughs> uh, Maybe he doesn't have a, as many friends as he thinks, so maybe he's preparing. I have no idea. But I know that just last month, there's this other article where he was going to spend a little bit of time in jail. So I listen to him, and I see these kinds of things he said about and, you know, defend your church and do this for your leader, all this stuff. It's just, 
there's not one thing. If we're going to just talk about how the Bible is used to manipulate and coerce uh, for people to get what they want, this is a prime example, making it seem as if if you're in this place right now, in this church, in this group, you um, have this purpose to defend and to um, support your leader at almost at all cost. And so uh, the interesting thing was, so I, you know, I, I got a little background on this guy, Anthony. I can't say if NTCC did the same. They just found a cool quote that um, fit what they wanted to put, a, a kind of vibe they wanted to put out there on their Facebook page. I don't know if they looked this guy up. I don't know if they are cool with being associated with him by quoting what he said. Uh, people say things, but it is good to put it in context. And um, But uh, what's very interesting is with all of the issues with NTCC and their and their tie the their whole tithe situation where they they just believe um, wholeheartedly that that's in the Bible, the KJV. They believe it's in there, and yet none of it makes any sense. And <laughs> what this guy Anthony Shama said at the end of this one video, he had his little little service or little. I don't even know if he calls it a church service in his little, looks like a living room. Some little, some interesting pictures on the wall. But um, he had this to say. Of ease and prosperity. Come on. Um, as a, as a preacher, yeah. as, as a man who went through life um, always thinking that I was self-sufficient. I had the money. I mm -hmm. Self-made is Come what on. they call it. Yeah. Uh, High-minded is what Laura <laughs> said earlier. Um, you know, I always knew God. I have a, I had a form of godliness. Come on. <laughs> but in a big way, when we rely on ourselves uh -oh. and we rely on congregations to fill tithe baskets, uh -oh. we're denying the power of the Holy That's Spirit. Right. And the point here is not to promote what Pastor Anthony Shama is saying about the Bible and what it teaches, it's about his attitude, which is also mixed. <laughs> you know, he, it, it shows you how these things operate, right? When people want to manipulate you and they want to uh, use you for their, their business, which, make no mistake, that's what NTCC is. Um, to some degree, from what I can see from Anthony, he's got some things going on. Um, but there'll be enough there of, in this case, a church cult. There'll be enough there of the Bible, of what most people know to be true. They throw in their little quirky quirk quirks, like their outward holiness doctrine and their um, which has changed over the years too, um, and their uh, belief in tithes. Tithes, they have to push that because that has to do with numbers, it has to do with money, it has to do with success, it's, ha it's how they measure your success uh, in all of the churches. Or if you, um, it's also if you're, let's say, just a church member, it's how they're going to measure your heart and whether it's right or not with God. And if you keep hearing about it, maybe you're the one that they're directing their message to. But I found it interesting. I'm, I'm putting this at the end here. <laughs> this guy, Anthony, he has just cracked me up all night as I've watched his videos. Honestly, it cracks me up, but it's, it's pathetic, too. It's really pathetic, his whole body of work. It's all the same kind of thing, whether it's someone in a little living room that I don't know if he attain, if he has a desire to get more or not, but right now that's where he is. <laughs> but he's got this 
I mean, I, I did watch one of his other videos. He does do some sort of ministry to the poor and to homeless and things like that. Uh, he has a whole soliloquy here and that he wrote up about um, about this bus, about this RV that he wants. And the funniest thing is that if you read all the ways, you know, you can give and send it to the dealer or you could just send cash in the mail and a... a no, I don't have it here where I can read it. It might say like a greeting card or something. I don't know. It just reminds me of NTCC as well because you put your tithe in an envelope. Do you ever get... Uh, and maybe they do now. Uh, maybe they do. And that's why I want to be careful about what I say. But it was long standing. You put tithe or a certain pledge and it, oh, pledge is different. But you put your tithe in an envelope, you can get a printout, you can get a, um, you can get a receipt on the spot or anything. You just put it in. Could, they could come back later and say, we never got your tithe. Lots of people have that happen. So it, it's, it comes across as being like shyster way of operating. It really does because you get a receipt for everything. And the moral of this story is if you're going to <laughs> quote someone, know what they're about. <laughs> we should have just stuck with Charles Charles Spurgeon and Corey Ten Boom. Oh my.